Hello and welcome. My name is Andy Solkeld and this is my Start Competing 40k series uh, that I kind of pulled together to help my friends and others in the community to kind of get them ready uh, to understand what to expect at their first tournament uh, in 40k. There's a lot of social anxiety and nerves that can go into it and I just wanted to share my experiences of someone who has lived with anxiety and depression um, who almost didn't go to events because of this uh, to just try and help people understand the situation a bit better and to alleviate as many concerns as they might have. In this series so far we've kind of talked about the logistics, how tournaments are run and everything to do with that. Today we're going to look more about the strategy and what you can build into your list ahead of a tournament, the sorts of things you should think about. Um, now, I will never tell you what you can't, uh, can't play, shouldn't play, uh, should play, etc. There is so much kind of self-expression in this game, either through the, the models we paint and build or through the list design, everything like that. And ultimately, you have to pick what you want to um, and what you think is cool and what you enjoy doing. Um, as I talk about in the very first episode of this series, motivation and why we do things is incredibly important. Um, so what I say here might not be relevant to you specifically, but it's something that you should be, or that could benefit you from being aware of. There are a huge plethora of sources that are available online talking about the meta game, um, what what people are playing, what's doing well, what's doing badly, and why. Uh, I'm not going to try and cover all of that. Uh, what I will say is there's two very useful resources that are free, easy to access, that are worthwhile kind of checking out each week. First one is Meta Monday, which is a um, a kind of Reddit post that goes up that just talks about the events of the weekend and has some stats attached to it that says what did well, what didn't do well, what won, won the biggest events, etc. And then the second one is the Goonhammer Competitive Innovations uh, articles that are now connected to uh, a stat center. And these basically give more of a write-up and context to what is present in Meta Monday. They kind of talk about the nuance of the factions, how they will interplay and things like that. Very useful. Obviously, not necessary. You don't need to be aware of this. But if you do want to have an idea of what you might face going into an event, these are worthwhile to just have a look at to see what's doing well. So now when we're looking at army composition, let's have a think about how we're actually going to score our victory points and so on. The game has moved forward from a place where it was all about just tabling your opponent and getting kill points, etc. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Some people like it, some people don't. It's just something to be aware of. But right now, as of recording in the time of Nephilim, you need to think about how you're going to score primary and how you're going to score secondary and also the, the mission. But I'll cover that briefly at the end. So primary is all about standing on an objective and holding it in your command phase. And you will score uh, hold, hold one, two more or hold two, three more. And depending on this, um, you will score 4, 8, or 12 primary. And what this typically means in an army is you need something that either that is durable, that can stand on an objective where it has to be held in the open, or it needs to be cheap or points efficient to hold it when it's behind cover and can't easily be, be removed. Um, so you just need to kind of think about what you are going to put where to hold objectives. Now, there are various nuanced things you can do um, where if there is, say, an objective in the open, you could have it held by a character that is being granted lookout sir from something that cannot be shot. And therefore, that character cannot be shot as long as you have closer models to the shooting unit. There's a lot of nuance you can kind of plan in. Um, when you are also a, a less durable army, it can be worth putting units inside transports so that if the transport is destroyed and the transport is holding the objective, then you um, spill out 
models onto the objective and hold it with those. The most important things in this is understanding uh, objective secured, because obviously objective secured kind of provides the trump card over non-objective secured. And being able to plan where your obsec is going and how it is going to hold objectives uh, really matters here. Um, my main recommendation with regards to all scoring, but particularly in primary, is to think of it as a differential. So if you play the game evenly, if both you and your opponent score eights on primary for the entire game, the differential is zero. If, however, you deny your opponent four primary, then you are up four points and winning. And this kind of adds into the thinking about what the projected score will be. If I've managed to deny my opponent four primary for three turns, I'm 12 points ahead and so on. But if they're going second and they're likely to score a 12 on the turn five, um, then that gives them four back, which means I'm only eight in the lead. And these are just, these are very complex things to think about, but largely it just gives you a, a more, I find it a simpler way of understanding primary because you don't have to count up. You just have to count the differences. And it's like, well, I've beaten you on primary three times. You, you've you beaten me on this this times. These are the differences. And here's who's winning or losing. And that's just, that's kind of primary. So secondaries are, again, a very complex part that has been changed a lot in Nephilim. Um, the main thing with secondaries is you have to pick three of them before the game starts um, and you have to kind of, um, and they have to come from three separate categories. Now I can't go into all the individual factions here because those are quite complicated and there's hundreds of secondaries now that can be picked. But what I can do is talk about briefly each category in itself and what to kind of think of and build into your list. So the two simplest ones to start with as categories are Purge the Enemy and Warpcraft. Purge the Enemy almost entirely depends on your opponent's army composition. Um, so this is either Bring It Down, which wants you to kill vehicles or monsters, uh, and Assassinate, which wants you to kill characters. Um, you will have no agency over these. These are just things to be aware of if your opponent happens to give them up. So, for example, if you are playing against a knight's army, bring it down is something you should take if you feel you will be killing the knights. And whilst I'm remembering this, that is one of the key things in picking your secondaries. Pick something that you are going to score by just doing what you want to do anyway. Um, so for bring it down against knights, you know you're going to have to kill these knights at some point and therefore you will score victory points by playing the game how you want. Um, assassinate, I always think, is a trap. Armies that give up a lot of points in Assassinate typically are very good at screening their characters. Uh, as a Sisters player, I, I have five characters in my list, which gives up a total of uh, 16 points, and most games my characters never die. Uh, unless I give them to people and if someone is playing if someone takes assassinate against me I'm going to keep my characters at the back and they are going to go nowhere near the front line and it gives me as the defending player agency so just be aware of those ones Warpcraft is the second easiest one to consider and it largely comes down to does your uh, list have a psyker in it uh, if you don't have a Psyker, you just need to be aware of uh, Abhor the Witch and whether your opponent has lots of Psykers. Ask at the beginning of the game. Um, if you do have a Psyker, largely your choices are um, Warp Ritual or Psychic Interrogation or Mental Interrogation, whatever it's called. Um, now, clearly, some factions can ally in, so take an Inquisitor or an Agent of Chaos or something to bring a Psyker in for these secondaries so this is something you could build into your list as an option with the two default ones i i typically will take warp ritual if my opponent has access to denies or if i need psychic powers elsewhere 
throughout the game because you only need to cast it three times to succeed. If, however, my opponent has no psychers, no access to denies, then I will typically take mental interrogation because it has more upside. The problem with mental interrogation is once it is denied, then you cannot ever go back and score those points and so on. So if they have access to denies, there is a chance that you just miss out on one or two casts and therefore score lower than warp ritual. Something to be aware of um, that you can build in. Um, the next three categories are No Mercy, No Respite, Battlefield Supremacy, and Shadow Operations. So No Mercy, No Respite is typically either Grind Them Down or No Prisoners, both of which are uh, dependent on the relative army compositions that you and your opponent have. So No Prisoners is something that is determined by the opponent's army, and if they give it up, you could, you score equal to the wounds you kill from, I believe it's non-vehicle, non-monster, non-character. Can't remember precisely. But largely, it's aimed at more elite or large army compositions. It's a very, it's a very kind of standard uh, generic kill secondary. If you feel you're probably, if you work out the maximum you can score, and maybe assume you're going to kill... 50 to 75 percent of it and if you're happy with that score it's worth considering grind them down is a tricky one and often often people take grind them down when they are a more elite army than their opponent so where they have fewer models few units and therefore uh, they think well if i'm losing all my units then i'm losing the game anyway and what this creates is this kind of they double down on a win but also a problem and the big problem i see with grind them down is that the way 40k is played right now is there will be two to three turns of significant damage um where you will be doing the most effective combat and um and output to your opponent's army which means you will almost certainly score it two to three times in a game however once all that has happened you're fighting with scraps in both cases. Um, and that can mean no, you don't score it at all afterwards. And it can lead to this kind of polarizing, you've doubled down on a risky situation and you end up worse as a result. But equally, you've correctly identified it could work and it's paying off and therefore um, you do better. Grind them down also is significantly better if you're going second rather than first, as it allows you to know um, what you need to do. But equally, if you end up going first, your opponent knows what they need to do to stop you scoring. So I'm not a big fan of it, but it is a default secondary, so be aware of it. You then have Battlefield Supremacy, which is largely go somewhere and stand somewhere and stay there. Um, this one is all about maneuverability. So default, engage on all fronts, behind enemy lines. You need to think about whether you can reasonably spread out and be everywhere for engage on all fronts. Um, typically plan to be in three table quarters for 10 points, um, but also be aware that you could score higher. Um, and then behind enemy lines, this is something you can actually build into your list, whether it's with fast moving units that can get their turn one or deep striking units or reserve units that can get there later on and this is particularly good on certain matchups and with certain armies and it's worthwhile considering it also doubles down with some of the other secondaries that are available and therefore where whenever you can get a couple that want you to do the same thing it's worthwhile considering doubling up on them Obviously, you end up in the same problem where if one of them fails, they both fail. But equally, if one succeeds, they both succeed. So it's a risk-reward situation. Finally, you have the shadow operations category, which is the go somewhere, do an action, lose output as a result, score victory points. And the default ones are some of the best, which are raise the banners and retrieve Nephilim data. So Retrieve Nephilim data needs you do, to do an action in each of the four quarters. And this is something that can fairly easily be set up. Um, 
particularly in your on your opponent's side of the field, if you have two six-man units that can deep, of infantry that can deep strike, um, you can set up uh, retrieve Nephilim data for a fairly easy 12 points. Um, but be aware, if your opponents can screen you out, they can deny you points this way. Banners, again, if you have access uh, to infantry in your army, then you can raise banners on objectives. And if you raise banners, they essentially score you passive victory points once raised and encourage your opponent to come to you to take them down. And again, you can build this in by having access to infantry. Certain armies can't do it, certain armies can, it's, but it's something you can build into your list. Um, I personally, as a sisters player, I really like banners because it plays exactly the way I want my sister's army to play, which is essentially, I am going to passively score points. I want you to come to me to deny them because if an opposing faction comes within uh, 24 inches, then they're in my threat range. And that means that I can kind of counter assault very effectively. Just something to think about, about when you pick your secondaries, you want to be able to have them fit with the rest of your army. A uh, key point on this, um, just as something that I've started doing recently, I have stopped taking Abhor the Witch against Thousand Sons and Grey Knights because I, um, I am most interested in sitting back and letting them come to me um, rather than those which prompt me to go towards them and kill them. So I don't want any kind of any split decisions. I just want to say, you're coming to me and we're both going to score our points. And if you come to me, then you're entering my threat range. So that's, that's broadly where to think about on secondaries. Typically you're looking for secondaries. You can score around 30 to 35 points on across all three. So between 10 to 12 on each of them. Those are good secondaries to accept. Um, some, some factions have access to their own uh, faction ones. Um, others do not. One of the more complex things you can do in list creation is to try to deny access to secondaries. And you can also deny access through play, but you could say, I only want to take four characters, so or three characters, so Assassinate only gives up nine or 13 victory points. I, want to, I only want to take enough vehicles that I would give up 10 on Bring It Down, but not more. I only I don't want to give up a lot on um, no prisoners etc and you can kind of plan these things out um, in list creation so after you've kind of thought about those uh, sorry I'm just checking my notes over here to make sure I cover any ev everything you then need to think about uh, applying that in the context of the missions you're going to be playing so what this means is look at the missions in the pack and ask your, that you're going to play at the event and consider whether you also have the tools to be able to plant bombs on, tear down their icons, the cheap throwaway unit that would be able to stand on your back objective and do the action on data scry salvage, the fast moving units that could move out at the end of the game for the big end of game scoring on say uh, abandoned sanctuaries or um what's it called um tide of conviction and understanding that you may need additional things built in to enable you to score those finally and one of the most simple things you can do before an event is deploy your army set like not everyone has access to a table not everyone has access to a terrain but just sit down map out roughly the size of your deployment zone like just use bits of paper that show where the terrain would be and think about right how am i going to deploy my army in on the terrain setup that i know is coming um what this will allow you to do is think about the movements you need to make on turn one turn two turn three etc reason this is important is for something like banners uh, on some objectives you will need to move nine inches to raise a banner turn one and what that means is you either need uh, fast moving infantry, 9, 12 inches, so probably jump pack or not six, 6 inch moving infantry out of a transport or something similar like that. Um, 
or it could be i want to move from this ruin to this ruin how far is that um where should i deploy this unit or this unit relative to that it also means you can look at potential sight lines for deploying behind obscuring terrain and then how far you can move out out behind it and then take a shot these are all things you can practice and think about at home before ever going to an event. so hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea if you like this series if you like what i've talked about i can talk about them more in detail um this was largely just set up to help my friends and help them kind of figure out what they need to do ahead of going to their first tournament um but i figured i'd record it here so i could put it out for the world to hopefully help more people but if it's something you're interested in the simplest way to let me know is comment like subscribe i hate saying it but it is actually true that i will look at them and i will be like okay people have asked for this i will do that this is the end of this series of start competing what i think i'm going to do just because it's come to my mind and i think it will help a lot is i will talk about uh, the UK tournament circuit uh, mission pack and terrain pack uh, and kind of go through each mission, each um, each terrain layout and talk about how I would position an army and the things I'm thinking about. It would give people good insight into what to consider on a mission, uh, what secondaries to consider taking and then relative kind of thought processes around it. Uh, and I may come up with a couple of other things. Um, one of the things I've been thinking about recently is, say, um, how to evaluate a unit. Uh, and it comes down to basically whether it is uh, durable or throwaway and whether it is uh, mission playing or output related. And then where the points cost should come for each of those things something to think about but again if you've enjoyed this if you if you have appreciated it please do like subscribe share etc because it lets me know that people want to see more anyway this is the end of my start competing 40k series i've been andy Salkeld, and i will continue to be and this will continue to be here and i'll keep doing more so thank you very much and i look forward to seeing you next time thank you